い<笑> So I was just over at Supreme Models hanging out while I was getting ready for、um, Storytime Supreme Models at Marky Mark、um, here. And so the topic today is.、Um, The topic today is my favorite photos in the book. And each book, each photo in the book, what the tagline for this whole thing is every page has a story. And every page in Supreme Models, iconic black women who revolutionized fashion, does have a story. Because it was、um, the whole process of writing a book was crazy. The whole process of interviewing the models was crazy. The whole process of licensing the photos was crazy. The whole process of working with an editor to, to write this book was, was just bananas. But I had the,、um, you know, Abrams Books is amazing, and my editor was amazing, Sarah Massey, and I had a great team around me that was like so supportive. And so it got done, and I think we, we created something that was really, really impactful and really, really beautiful. So,、um, the topic today is my favorite.、Um, the topic today is hello, c h i l i s i u s The topic today is my favorite photos from the book. And、um, I guess you can't, I can't talk about my favorite photos from the book without talking about the cover. This is Janelle Williams, who's an exciting model.、Um, she had a big year last year. She is the face of Tom Ford Beauty.、Um, so that ad was everywhere. Those commercials were everywhere. Really big、um, um, booking for her. But she's also the cover of Supreme Models Iconic Black Women Who Revolutionized Fashion, the first ever art book devoted exclusively to black top models. I always say top black, top, top black models.、Um, So, I love this photo. This photo is by Tuximi Yeste. It ran in Numero magazine. And、um, the way that it ended up on the cover was Abrams Books asked me to Abrams Books asked me to choose 10 photos from the book that, they, that I thought could be on the cover. And I couldn't come up with 10. It was like Sophie's Choice. You know what I mean? It was my, my book, and I wanted the photos to be really approachable. I wanted, the, I wanted you to like walk into a store and see the cover and just think, okay, I'm gonna buy the book. I don't care what the, the topic of the book is. And I sent, I sent in all these photos that were sort of safe. So I sent in a bunch of photos of Iman, q u a p d u is in the house. I sent in a couple of photos of, I sent in a bunch of photos of the Queen, Naomi Campbell, who, by the way, actually followed me as Supreme Model's book. Today, this morning, and actually talk to me and my friend Maria. And I swear to you, I start getting these texts first thing in the morning from Maria. And I'm like, who is texting this, me this early? And it's Maria. And she's like, look at your Instagram. <coughs> so I go to my Instagram. My throat is dry. So I go to my Instagram. I go to my Instagram, and it is the queen. It, I couldn't even believe it. You guys don't even understand. Well, if, you saw my, if you saw the episode Friday, which is actually up on my YouTube channel, Marcellus Reynolds is my YouTube channel. So that whole hour of me talking about the Naomi factor, all things Naomi, as it, pretends, pretend, as it corresponds to this book. Then you know that I absolutely positively love Naomi Campbell. I mean, Naomi Campbell is the, queen, is the queen. Let's actually look while I talk about Naomi Campbell. Let's look at Naomi's section in the book. So, anyway, I wake up this morning and Naomi Campbell has followed me as Supreme Models. And it turns out that she just saw the book for the first time. And that actually sort of pissed me off a little bit because I sent her several copies of the book to her agency.、Um, the Libra Spot says you should make an all Naomi book. There are several all Naomi books. Rizzoli did, which I have also right there,、um, a book called Naomi. Oh no, it's by Universe. Universe did an all Naomi book. And then Tashin just did a really beautiful, super expensive Naomi book. Which is like、uh, the cover is extraordinary. So Naomi has a couple of her own books. But then this is the Naomi section in Supreme Models. It's her Paris Vogue cover from 1991. It's this amazing quote by her, which says, I didn't work 28 years for it to be a trend. 
um, which I love because, uh, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, using black models is a trend and you do them like they work one season and then they don't work another season. Then this is a very famous photo of Naomi by Herb Ritz wearing head to toe Azadine Alaya. And then this is one of my favorite photos in the book since we're talking about my favorite photos in the book today. This is one of my favorite photos in the book. It is Naomi Campbell from Vogue Italia from, I believe, 1989. And it's by the maestro, the iconic, the divine, the incredible Stephen Mizell. So... There's, so that's my first, so my first favorite photo in the book is the cover of, with Janelle Williams, and my second favorite cover in the book is the Naomi Stephen Mizell photo. So let's just move right along. So when you open the book, you've got this like wonderful gold leaf, which cost a fortune to get into the book, um, and then you get to this, you know, this gorgeous threesome Anais Molly, Jordan Dunn, and Jasmine Tooks of Jasmine Tokes or Tooks of um, all people, because a lot of people don't think that Jasmine is an editorial girl because of her work with Victoria's Secret. But Jasmine is an editorial girl, and she is a runway star. Jasmine's got a hot little walk on her. But that's not one of my favorite photos. I just think that's a really beautiful photo and a very interesting way to open the story, open the book, and tell the story of what the book is about. But this photo right here is one of my favorite photos in the book. And it's from Vogue Italia, and it's from Emma Summerton. And what's iconic about this photo is the is it's kind of the new supers. You know, Naomi's not in this photo. Leah's not in this photo. It's these brand new girls that sort of broke out and, like, changed the game. So I'm going to show you the photo in the galleys, and I'm going to list the, the talent that's in this photo. So it is Jordan Dunn, Cecily Lopez, Laís Ribeiro, Melody Monroe, Melody Monroe's, Monroe's, who we talked about a little bit earlier at the at the um, at the Supreme Models page. She's in this gorgeous photo, this huge group photo photo of some of the top models in the world at the time. Arlena Sosa, Chanel Mon. Aminata Niaria, who I wanted to be in the book desperately because she's got such a cool face. Where's Aminata in this photo? There she is. There is that beauty right there. Aminata. And then it is Rose Cordero, who is in the book. And Rose is right there. God, there's so much black beauty. And then there is Ajak Ding who I am Instagram friends with, and we actually sit and talk via DM, which I love. And then Chanel Iman is over there on the side. How beautiful is that photo? So that's one of my favorite photos in the book, and that's there's only two double-page photos in the book. It's this one, and then it's the one that closes the book, which is also another great, great book. Eileen, it's a combination Robe Chronicles and Storytime Supreme Models today. <laughs> okay, so this is not one of my favorite photos in the book. This is just really cool. Veronica Webb wrote my foreword. And the foreword is basically is the story about what the book is sort of about. And Veronica's take on it is uh, about her experiences as a top, top model from, you know, the late 80s all the way through till now, because Veronica is still working every day. But this is a beautiful photo of Veronica from Italian Vogue. And it's one of my favorite photos because it's one of her favorite photos. And I mean, look at that face. Look at that, you know, on a Paris street. Look at that styling. That photo is everything. And this photo is by Walter Chen, and it's from 1993, and it's from Vogue Italia. Like, that is fashion. And this is from my foreword. So if you've got the book, you should actually read the book. A lot of people have the book, and they're not reading it. They're like, you know, looking at the pictures, and it's a great picture book, but it's also got some really amazing stories, you know, Speaking of which, this is one of my favorite photos, and this was one of the hardest photos to, to clear. This photo is by Max Viducal, and that's why it was so hard to clear, because Max is very 
specific about the photo usage of his about the usage of his photos and he's very specific about licensing them so i really had to ask him and sort of show him what the project was but this photo is from vogue paris it is naomi on the cover with christy turlington and i love again this styling and this photo it's max viduco and What's also beautiful about this photo is it's Naomi and Christy. And Christy Turlington is a dear, dear, well, she's not a friend, but I know her. I used to work for her in New York. One summer in New York, we worked, I worked for her, not together. But I ended up spending some time with her when I worked for her. And she is one of the sweetest people in the world. And she wrote this beautiful essay about diversity, inclusion, and her friendship with Naomi Campbell. And she talks so lovingly about um, Naomi Campbell, but she talks so importantly about the need for diversity and inclusion in fashion. And there's just something so amazing about Naomi and Christy in this picture. It's like the two of them at the height of their like supermodel trinity, you know, Naomi, Christy, Linda running the universe moment in their, in their careers. And this photo is from 1992. This photo is from the golden age of the, of the supermodel. I would say from like 1989 until 1995 when it was Linda, Christy, Naomi, Helena, Helena um, Christensen, um, Claudia Schiffer, Cindy Crawford. When it was like the true runway queens, the true divas, the, the true editorial girls. That was the golden age of like fashion and modeling. Um, God, I could go on and on and on. So another one of my favorite photos is, I worked very, I'm, of course I'm upset with the divine Pat Cleveland. And I worked very hard to, I'm so happy that you bought the book. I worked very hard, TR. I'm so, I'm, I'm, I worked very um, hard to find photos of Pat Cleveland because she's from that like sort of late 60s, early 70s era and it's very hard to find photos and then it's very hard to find, to figure out how to license those photos, who owns those photos. So as I was doing all this research on Pat Cleveland, I kept seeing this image, but this image didn't run in a magazine. It was unpublished. But I love this image of her. She's actually sitting backstage at a Halston show. And I was like, that face, that big, beautiful, natural hair, and that outfit, and she looks so innocent in the face, but then she is giving you body in that Halston dress. And it, there's something provocative about the way her legs are crossed, and it's just this unguarded moment, but it's still so controlled and beautiful. So this is one of my favorite photos in the book. It's of Pat Cleveland, and it's one of the few photos in the book that was unpublished before this book. And it's by Ron Galela. And I think it's from, yep, August 1977. So this is a very young, very beautiful Pat Cleveland in 1977. And what I love about this photo is she looks exactly like her daughter, Anna, in this photo. Who's now a top model. And then, what's, okay, so that was one of my favorite photos. This is not one of my favorite photos, but this is a beautiful photo of Pat Cleveland from the cover of L'Officiel. And then there's this wonderful quote by Pat. But this photo did not make the book. So I'll show you what Pat's section looks like in the actual book. So let's go to C. Because it's by last names. And that would be after Naomi. And I have. Okay. So in the book. If you have the book, this is what Pat Cleveland's section looks like. So it's her name, the five biggest clients she worked for. Hey, Chevy Wolf. Hey, Beatrice. And then it's her, you know, iconic picture, which I love, which is my, one of my favorite photos in the book. But then in the book, I used one of her photos of what she looks like now. And she's still such an ageless, unbelievable beauty. And I did that on purpose. If the model was still working currently, I tried to use like a photo from the beginning of her career and I tried to use a photo of what she looks like now. It was definitely something that I did on purpose. So it, sh it could have been this. 
that could have been that with like her amazing L'Officiel cover, her Paris um, L'Officiel cover, and then her quote. But it ended up in the book being this. And I love this photo so much more because it's what the queen looks like right now. So that's one of my favorite photos in the book. And that's one of my favorite sections in the book. All right, another one of my favorite photos is one of my favorite new models who's actually become a real friend of mine. Um, her name is Janice Alta Garcia Delon, but she goes by the name Delon. And I love, love, love Delon. The first time I saw her on the runway, I was just like, this girl has it. This girl is going to be a star. She's got this really cool walk. She's got this really cute, bubbly personality. And what I love the most about Delone's face is that she's like one of those classic beauties. Like you, Delone could have been a model in the 40s. She could have been a model in the 50s. She could have been a model in the 60s. You can literally insert her in any era and she would have been a top model. She's just got this like ageless, this, um, this... This age, not ageless, but this beauty that transcends time. But what's really, in, what's really interesting about Delone and what's one of my favorite pictures is this photo. So this photo, I thought, this was my choice for the cover. There are two photos in here that I thought were going to be on the cover. That I really thought were going to make the cover. Hey Beatrice, um, I love you too. Um, there's my nephew, Joe. So I wanted this photo from Allure to be on the cover because I thought this photo sort of really encompassed what the book was about. And I also thought that this photo was really of the moment. You know, we're seeing all these like sort of like Delone is Afro-Latina. Um, Amito is African, clearly. Um, Iman Hamam is mixed race. She's um, Egyptian, which means she's Muslim and I believe she's Dutch. And so when I look at this cover, I see the full spectrum of like sort of multicultural beauty. And so I thought that this would be the cover of the book because it's so approachable and the girls are all smiling and they're making eye contact with the viewer. There's something really beautiful about the, sw the tones, the, the swimsuits and the tones and the styling. I love this photo. So I thought this was going to be the cover. It's just my absolute, one of my absolute favorite photos in the book. And I love it even more now because I've since met Delone and she's just as beautiful inside as she is outside. So this photo is from, it's Delone with Iman Haman, Amita Lagoon. It's photographed by, you know, the king, Patrick de Marchelier. And it's from Allure, April, 19, uh, April 2017. So it's really beautiful. And then this photo up here, I've got a little story about. So this was supposed to be the photo that was over Delone's essay because I got to interview Delone before the book came out. And um, um, so I got to interview Delone before the book came out. So I sent them, when I sent them the releases, I sent, when I sent the releases, I sent each agent and each, I sent the models what their section in the books look like in the book look like. And I got a note back from Delone's people that they love the book, they love their section, but they didn't want to use this photo. So I had to take that photo out. How is that for shade? But I happen to love that photo. But I didn't have a problem taking that photo out because that meant I had to spend less money. So I was like, if you don't like it, I will definitely take it out because I don't care. And this is what the photo, the section looks like in the book. And I actually happen to love this big white space. I think there's something cool and modern about the white space in the book. So that's what the photo ended up looking like in the book. Okay? So that's one of my favorite photos in the book. Speaking of photos that I thought were potential covers, this photo and this model and this particular layout, there are so many amazing photos in this layout that it was hard to choose one for the book. But I love this freshness. Now, this is Leah Cabede, supermodel. And Leah and I actually know each other. A million years ago, I was like a, a, a model. And I lived in Chicago for a bit before I started traveling all over the world. And Leah and I worked together several times. We had a client in common that loved the two of us and always put us together as a couple. 
And so we became like sort of friendly while living in Chicago. And I've always loved it. And I love how she just like left Chicago and became a supermodel. And so I sent this photo to Abrams thinking that this could possibly be the cover because I love that. It's so fashion. I love this dress. I love her pose. I love her face, of course, because she's beautiful. All that beautiful natural hair blowing. I love that some of it's in her face, but you still see that eye. And that eye like just connects with the viewer. You know what I mean? You still, even though the hair is in her face, you still get her. You still see her. It's still a connection with the camera. So that photo I thought had a chance of making the cover, but it didn't. But it's still one of my favorite photos in the book. Not just because it's Leah Cavetti, but um, and we know each other, we work together. She's got this beautiful heart, and she's hum a humanitarian and an actress and a mother. But, um, and God, she's collected um, makeup campaigns like very few models before or after her. So this is what her section looks like in the book. It's this wonderful picture. Of course, her name, five biggest clients, five biggest magazines she's worked for. I wrote a little bio for her. I left out the fact that she started her career in Chicago. And then there's this amazing photo. God, I love that photo. I love the drama of that dress. And then there's her legendary Belle de Jour Vogue Paris cover. And what's really important about this cover and makes Leah a supermodel and so important to fashion is this was the first time that Vogue Paris devoted an entire issue of its magazine to one model. And that model was Leah Cabetti and that model was of a woman of color. So every single editorial in this magazine was of Leah. That's why the issue is called Belle du Jour. That's amazing. That's historic. The only people, there were ads with models of every race in the magazine, but she was the only model in every, ad, in every editorial in that issue of Vogue Paris. And this also has a very special distinction. It's the single most exp expensive photo in the book. We're not even going to talk about that because that still chaps my ass to this day. But it was worth it because, you know, I had to do Leah justice. Moving on. <laughs> um, uh, Gr Grace Jones is in the book. Uh, she's the queen. In fact, one of my closest friends when I was writing the book, I, was, I constantly kept saying, I'm going to take Grace Jones out. I'm going to take Grace Jones out because she's known more as, an, a, as, a, as a recording artist and an actress than she is as a model. And Portia was literally like, if you take, Gr Jace Gr Gr if you take Grace Jones out of the book, I'm going to fight you. <laughs> and guess what? You just missed some tea. Um, so moving on, another one of my favorite photos and another one of the most important sections in the book and one of the most important, in my opinion, models, models of color in fashion history is Daphne Maxwell Reed. Now you probably know that name. You probably know this face if you think about it long enough. Daphne Maxwell Reed went on to become the second on Viv on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. But before she was Aunt Viv on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, she was the first black model on the cover of Glamour magazine. Um, she's had this really interesting life. She's had this really interesting career. She was the first black homecoming queen at the prestigious Northwestern University in Chicago. Well, we say Chicago, Illinois, but it's actually Evanston. And this was her cover of Glamour magazine. And she flew to New she was going to school at Northwestern, where she was an interior designer um, major, an interior design major, I believe. And she would get on a plane, show her ID, she would go buy a ticket, show her ID, and she could fly back and forth between Chicago and New York for $25 because she was a college student. She would go to New York in the morning, do a booking go back to the airport and fly back to Chicago. And one day she was asked to come to New York to do a test, to shoot a test. And she was kind of like, I don't travel for tests. It had to be, uh, it had to be a real booking. 
And the photographer, no, the stylist was like, girl, you really got to come. This is really going to be important. So you really have to come. So she gets on a plane, goes to New York, does this test. And it turns out to be a cover try for Glamour magazine. And she ends up getting it. But they don't tell her that she got the cover of Glamour magazine. She's literally walking past the newsstand one day, looks over, sees her face, and realizes that she just made history. You just made fashion history. I just did Polly uh, Mellon talking to Amber Valletta in Unzipped. You just made fashion history. If you guys want a good movie to watch while you're on quarantine, Unzipped, the Isaac Mizrahi documentary is everything. Naomi, Christy, Linda, Cindy Crawford, Kate Moss, Carla Bruni, um, Patricia, Patricia Valesquez, all the girls, Shiraz Tall, all the girls from that moment are in that movie. Veronica Webb is in that movie. Anyway, so um, Dorothy, uh, uh, Daphne Maxwell Reed ends up being the first black woman on the cover of Glamour. She's legend because she was with uh, Ford models back when Eileen Ford was the agent. The day that Eileen Ford met her, the day that Eileen Ford met Daphne Maxwell Reed in the agency, she walked up to her, pinched her on the arm, and told her to lose five pounds. <laughs> I love that story. Can you imagine? Eileen Ford pinches you on the arm and says, lose five pounds, and she loses it. Um, so anyway, that's Daphne Maxwell Reed. But what I also love about this section in the book that I think is super important, so it's Daphne Maxwell Reed, first, first black woman on the cover of Glamour. Daphne did a really beautiful interview with me, and she covers a lot of points. She talks about being um, sort of a part of that wave of the late 60s girls that um, ended up really working really well, but um, in that Black is Beautiful moment, and ended up really becoming a part of the cultural um, landscape and changing the way that people thought about Black models and, and models of color. And she was contemporaries with this woman, this is Jolie Jones, who was the first black woman on the cover of Mademoiselle and also was a fixture in Seventeen magazine. And Jolie Jones is actually the daughter of Quincy Jones. Yes! So these so this section is really impactful because you've got da you've got Daphne Maxwell Reed, then you've got Jolie Jones, who's on the cover of Mademoiselle magazine in March 1969. Then as a footnote, up here. There is a woman, there's a model name, what's her name? Katiti, um, I'm not pronouncing her name, but it's Katiti Karande. Katiti Karande was the first black woman on the cover of Glamour College, which was a supplement of Glamour magazine. So oftentimes, people say that Katiti was the first black woman on the cover of Glamour magazine, but she wasn't. The first black woman on the cover of Glamour magazine was Daphne Maxwell Reed. Katiti was on this supplement that was stuck inside of a regular issue of Glamour magazine that was geared towards college girls. And the only reason she was on the cover of this magazine was because she won a contest that was the best dressed co-eds of the year. And she won that contest and they put her on the cover of the, of the supplement. So the woman that was the first model that was on the cover of Glamour magazine, not a supplement, not to diss Katiti because she is epic. Because what's really great about Katiti is the fact that she is obviously African with her dark skin and her natural hair and she is a beautiful woman and she was a college co-ed and she beat out thousands of applicants to be the best dressed co-ed in America but the queen is Daphne Maxwell Reed facts 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 <laughs> Gregory, am I making you dizzy because I'm shaking the um the the galleys too much, or am I making you um dizzy because um um uh I've got tons of Beverly Peel tea, but we're not talking about Beverly Peel this week because um we're talking about my favorite photos in the book. Um, Donielle Luna, of course, is in the book. She is a queen. She was the first black woman on the cover of Glam of uh. 
of British Vogue, and she was the first, the first black woman on the cover of any Vogue when she appeared in 1966. And not only is Danielle, Danielle Luna, let's show a picture of Danielle Luna from the book. Why not? We've got time. Not only is Danielle Luna the first black woman on the cover of British Vogue, she's also the first black woman to appear on the cover of American Harper's Bazaar. And this photo is one of the most beautiful photos in fashion history to me. And um, it's from 1966, the cover of British Vogue. She's the first black woman to appear on the cover of any Vogue. And Doña Luna's story is really sad because um, she should have been a superstar. And she just sort of petered out. Um, but, um, you know, she has her place in fashion history because we always want to talk about Beverly Peel being the first black woman on the cover of American Vogue. But eight years before American Vogue put a model of color on the cover, Doniel Luna was the first black woman on the cover of British Vogue. However, you know, American Vogue is the Vogue, is the, is the one that like, you know, the big dog, the one that matters. But what's interesting is that it took American Vogue so long to put a woman of color on the cover because Doña Luna did it in 1966 and I believe it was Bonnie... There was a black woman on the cover of Vogue Italia in 1971 and that was a really beautiful cover and I can't remember to the... I can't remember the name of that model right now. It escapes me. But um, I almost put that photo in the book because that photo was so beautiful. But she didn't have the, um, the clients to be in the book. She didn't stand up. She didn't work as much as the other girls in the book. And ultimately, you, have to, you had to have worked for high-end designers to be in the book, and you had to have appeared. What's going on with my connection? You had to have worked for high-end designers, and you had to have worked in, um, with uh, really big magazines, the most important magazines of the day. And so the final, we're going to wrap this up. The final favorite photo in this book is Alec Weck. When Alec Weck hit fashion, when she was discovered and became a top model, she changed the game. She took fashion by literal storm. Because up to that point, we had seen like African girls sort of on the runway. And we had seen like African girls like sort of working. But Alec Weck was so different. This face and her body at the time was so different from every other girl that we had seen. And when she, I remember when she did the, um, her first show was a Ralph Lauren show that was dedicated to Africa. And when she walked out on the runway and she sort of had the sort of uh, the round African face, but she had a very African body where she had those long legs and she had that high, beautiful butt. People were like, that's not a model. That's not the right silhouette. Oh, my God, what is that? I don't think she's beautiful. And American people had the nerve to be like, some American black people had the nerve to be like, well, that doesn't represent us. We don't look like that. But look at this. This is one of my favorite photos ever. Because the thing about Alec Weck is that she is a complete chameleon. She can give you a face like this, which is so perfect and black Barbie, and beautiful. But then she can turn around, and this was the photo that changed the game. This is her first photo of American L. And this face, this such an African face with those cheekbones, the eyes, that dark skin, this face was like so controversial and so like polarizing in fashion. Because she was so dark, she was so African looking. She was undeniably African looking. And it just, I mean, it caused, it, it caused a sensation. But designers loved her. American designers, Parisian designers, Italian designers, it loved her. And I'll go as far as to say this. There would be no Adut if there was no Alec. Alec kicked that door open for Adut Akesh. And then I love this quote in the book. So this is a photo by the maestro Jobin Simon from Elle that ran in this same issue. And what I love about, and then under it, I have this quote from Oprah Winfrey. And Oprah's quote, I'm going to read it to you. 
if Alec Weck had been on the cover of a magazine when I was growing up, I would have had a different concept of who I was. And that is from Oprah Winfrey. That quote right there sums it up. That's why I wrote this book. This book is a celebration of diversity and inclusion. This book is supposed to be about what fashion and the world should be about. It's about everybody having a place at the table. It's about not one race having cornered the market on what is beautiful. People of every race, every color, every creed, every size are beautiful. There's plus girls in this book too. There's dark-skinned girls, there's light-skinned girls, there's natural hair girls, there's girls with weaves. But that's what this book is about. It's about the need for diversity and inclusion. Everyone of every race needs to see themselves represented beautifully. So that's what this book is about. And that is my favorite, that is my last favorite photo in the book. But honestly, I love every single photo in this book. I chose them all. I paid for them all. This book was supposed to cost $35,000 in licensing fees. It ended up costing over $70,000, which I had to pay for out of pocket. And I don't, um, you know, I don't regret that at all. Okay, so that's it for my favorite photos. Really quickly, if you have a question or two, I can take questions. Other than that, I'm going to wrap it up. So do you have, anybody have a question? Type me a question now and I'll answer it. I will, I promise. I will answer the question. Um, and then I told you last night that, um, I told you that Naomi Campbell uh, followed me on Instagram and left me a comment at Supreme Models, uh, at Supreme Models. Yes, it's true. It's me. Um, all right, that's it. Um, any questions? Or can I go take this ridiculous head wrap off my head and actually get in the shower? <laughs> well, I did wash my face today, um, and I did, um, and I did brush. So at least there's that. I ran out of time though in my whole process. Um, a tui, a, a twa is um, dang is not in the book. Um, but Ajax is in the book, and Ajax's uh, Vogue Italia cover, which actually I almost put in this stack as one of my favorite photos. She's in the book. Um, uh, anyone opposed to being in the book? Yes, two people passed on being in the book. Deborah Shaw, who is legend, passed on being in the book. But Deborah Shaw, in my opinion, is much more of a runway model than a, than a, a editorial model anyway. So for me, that wasn't a big loss. Um, I did want to put her in the book because there's a lot of beautiful photos of her out there by Peter Lindbergh. But then she probably wouldn't have made the cut anyway because there's no Peter Lindbergh photos in the book because they were really expensive. They were really expensive to clear. But yes, Deborah Shaw passed on being in the book and a wonderful model from the 80s named Wanaki passed on being in the book. And they both passed on being in the book for the same reason. Wanaki and Deborah Shaw opposed, um, passed on being in the book because they were supposedly writing their own books. So they didn't want to be in my book. That said, I could have put them in the book anyway because all I had to do was buy the licensing rights to the photo. But if you told me you didn't want to be in the book, bye, Felicia. You didn't have to be in the book. There were plenty of models that wanted to be in the book, so <laughs> there's that. <laughs> Not to be shady, but there we are. Okay, um, I really love you. Beatrice, you are so sweet. I flew all the way to Paris to look for opportunities and get signed because was chasing my dreams. I was lucky enough. Vivian Westwood got me signed with Select Paris. Select Paris is everything. Select is a very good agency. I'm going to keep my eyes out for you, Beatrice, and you do well. Beatrice, I thought you were one of those Joram model girls. Um, okay, what else? Anybody else? Quaff, do do you have a question? Because if not, I'm going to get out of this hot-ass bathrobe and I'm going to go take a shower. Um, Jonathan Plummer just joined. Hi. Um, what else? Yeah, that's it, guys. I showed you my favorite photos in the book. What else? What more do you want of me? Chevy. 
What's the best advice you can give an upcoming female model? That's such good advice because you know what? I have this crazy reverence for models. And as a stylist, I've worked with some of the, you know, I used to be a model myself and I worked with some of the top models ever. And um, uh, I think of modeling as an art. I also think, hey man, how are you? So good to see, see you here. Um, I think of modeling as an art, but I also think of modeling as a skill. And so there are a lot of girls that are like, oh, I want to be a model. For me, it's like you need to figure out exactly what it is you're trying to get out of modeling. If, you're in, if you want to model because you want to be famous, that's not the right reason to be a model. If you want to be a model because you want to be told that you're attractive, eh, that's not the reason to be a model because you're not going to be told you're attractive. 99.9% .9 of the times, modeling is about rejection. Modeling is about going to a casting and hoping that you get the job and not getting the job and how you respond to it. Being able to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and keep going. So you have to be very clear on whether or not, on why you want to be a model. It can't be about the money either because the, the business of fashion has imploded. The internet killed fashion modeling. So, you know, all these, these companies are paying models pennies on the dime to shoot them chin down for e-commerce. You know, catalog models aren't making, you know, six figures anymore. They're making pennies. Um, all these girls that are, you know, if you look in a magazine and you see somebody that looks at, looks like you, you're their height, you're their body type, you, you like sort of look like them, then you might be able to be a model. But if you don't, there's no place for you. So don't break your own heart. Um, what else? But I wanted to get out of my comfort zone, select models fam, tiara, I, tiaras with select models. Um, Jonathan High, Quaff Du is my girl. Um, uh, who is my favorite model to work with as a stylist? My favorite model to work with. I was a big catalog stylist, so I have so many favorite models. But um, there's a model, and she's not black, that I'm obsessed with, that I've worked with so many times. And she's just a watching her work. And the things that she does and how she brings my clothes to life, it's, she proves that modeling is a skill. Her name is Ileana Chernikova, and she is a beautiful Bulgarian girl. And I've worked with her like five or six times, and every time I work with her, I, the film is always amazing, and I get so much out of it, and I learn so much about fashion watching her, because she is an artist. Um... What else, since I'm just taking questions about uh, Supreme Models, iconic black women that revolutionized fashion and about fashion? Um, modeling is a skill, but ultimately, if you're not making money as a model, you're not really a model. So stop breaking your own heart and go get a job. <laughs> All these girls are like, oh, I want to be a model, and you're running pillar to post, and you're doing these like bad tests, and you're wasting your money, and you're wasting your time because you... You're not getting anywhere. You're not signed with the agency. If you can't sign with a good, reputable agency, that's, a, that's the biggest determiner of whether or not you should be a model right there. Period. Ooh, one of my sisters is here. Hey, Sherry. Um, but that's that. So, okay. So, um, I'm going to go. And then um, I will be back. Uh, I'm working on something that um, with a bunch of models that are in the book. And um, it could be really good if we pull it off. And hopefully it'll launch on Wednesday. So I might see you on Wednesday when that launches. If not, I'll see you Friday. And let's talk about... Okay, so here's a question for all of you. So you know what the book is. You know what the topic is. What should I talk about on Friday's episode of Storytime Supreme Models? Thoughts? Quaff, do I know you got an opinion? What should I talk about on Friday's episode of Storytime Supreme Models? <laughs> Quaff, do is not answering me. She's just telling me how much she loves me and how she's so happy for me, which I know and I love you. Um, okay, so since you guys aren't telling me what I should talk about, I'm going to talk about on Friday... Um, talk about the evolution. The evolution of what, baby boy? Quaff Du is thinking. 
Um, Jermaine just joined. Jermaine, you late. I'm about to wrap this up. Uh, the evolution of fashion and how it's changed and why it's changed. That's interesting, but how does that pertain to models and pertain to my book? I mean, I could sit here and talk about anything, but it has to pertain to the book. All size inclusion in modeling. Oh, I like that, Quafdu. There is a plus girl in the book, and I tried to get um, I tried to get two other plus girls in the book, and I couldn't. I wanted Martina. I wanted Marquita Spring, or Martita. What is her name? Martita Pring. Marquita Pring. That's her name. I wanted Marquita Pring to be in the book, but I couldn't clear her photos. It was ridiculous. Every time I found a beautiful photo of her. And, and, and approached the photographer, they were stupid expensive. And I'm sorry, I wasn't paying like $2,000 for, for, for a girl that wasn't a super. You know what I mean? A girl that wasn't a top, top girl. But I was sad because I did want her in the book. But I ended up putting Precious Lee in the book, who's a friend of mine who I'd met in passing years ago. And I'm so happy she's doing so well because she's broken through and become a top girl. And so Marquita is in the praying. It Marquita, Marquita is not in the book. Precious Lee is in the book. And then um, there's a model, an iconic model that's still modeling, and her name is Pe Peggy Diller, and she's in the book. So I did put, um, I did put a couple of girls in the book that are that are plus, and I did put a couple of girls in the book that are um, that are that are of a certain age that are still working now. You know, and that aren't like double zeros or, or twos or fours. Um, okay. Uh, Tiara, it was nice to meet you. Steven, your little cute self is here. I see you. Um, I am going to... Friday's, Friday's topic is going to be... Okay. Friday's topic is going to be really interesting because I just came to it and I think you guys are going to like it. And Quaff do... We'll talk... We'll talk um, off... We'll talk about your idea off... Uh, via DM. But Friday's episode is going to be this. This is my personal copy of the book and it's really beat up right now because I carry it with me everywhere. Friday's episode is I'm going to show you all the autographs I have from inside the book Supreme Models because my goal with this book is to get every model that's in this book that's still alive to sign my book to autograph my book. And I'll show you something. I'll give you a little preview. Right here is Veronica Webb. And it says, Veronica Webb loves Marcellus. <laughs> and I've got some good autographs so far. So Friday will be all the autographs I have in the book and all their corresponding photos. And I think that'll be a really cool episode. And then I'll also take some questions. So happy Monday, people. Um, stay strong. Stay healthy during this pandemic. And um, I'm sending you love and I'm sending you prayers, okay? So have a great day. Bye.